there's this thing now Facebook's like, we want to avoid fake news. We want to move away from people being influenced by these fake news outlets. So that that's their story, right? And then they start, you know, changing their algorithm to make it more difficult to find videos like put on by submedia, for instance. Have you seen a significant drop in your, uh, I guess, exposure or, or distribution as a result of this? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and you can ask, you know, I keep asking independent media makers, but not just them, even big outlets like the New York Times uh, and, uh, and other big mainstream media. Everybody's being affected by this. And, and you know, it was it was a kind of catch-22 situation because we 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 didn't start the first. It was the stimulator page. We didn't start that. Uh, on Facebook, it was a fan who did it and eventually handed us the page to to us because it you know it became popular mm. and um, and the reality is is that Facebook sort of became like the internet you know I mean most people like back in the day people would just go to websites. Our website was getting like you know sixty thousand visitors a month um, before Facebook. Now people only go to websites if they found out, they find out through Facebook to a lesser degree, Twitter mm -hmm. and to a much lesser degree, Reddit. Um, and so we were forced to engage with that platform, uh, because there was a bit of a missed opportunity there too, while, you know, dealing with the uncomfortable fact that this is a major corporation that, you know, as we have been saying before the Cambridge Analytica thing like that, that particular scandal shouldn't have surprised anybody, you know, like this is something that, that anybody who was, has been paying attention could have seen coming. Right. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I backtrack, um, back when not to keep referring to the, to the, the glorious day of the anti globalization movement, but back then the thing that gave the anarchists and the anti-capitalist movement a lot of power was in the media. And the fact that this was a resource for spreading news that belonged to us and that was decentralized and that, that it was worldwide. And I'll explain what indie media is because a lot of young people out there might not know indie media was well, still exists. It's, they're certainly like a very small fraction of what it used to be. It was a global network of independent media centers and websites uh, that were local, uh, but part of a network. So there will be like an independent media center in Seattle, another one in, in Brisbane, Australia, another mm -hmm. one in Cape Town, South Africa, for instance. Even Palestine had an indie media center. And, um, and it was open publishing. And so these folks were hugely uh, making a huge breakthrough. So before YouTube, you can post videos there. Before Twitter, you can actually post short stories that will appear in a Twitter-like feed called, called the Newswire. Um, you could post photos like an Instagram. Um, it was all that in mm -hmm. one platform before any of these things sort of became commercialized and, uh, and basically put everybody else kind of like, you know, in, in a very in last place in terms of like ranking and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, but this belonged to us, and at this particular moment in time, specifically in the anti globalization movement, we could tell our side of the story. We can talk to people on the street and say why they were going to this protest, why they were trying to stop the World Trade Organization or the G20 meetings um, or the World Bank meetings, right? Those are the big three that people were going after, and all these free trade agreement convergences. And it was hugely effective, you know, and then people. Um, began organizing through that and, and, and through email lists, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and now all of this stuff is really, if you don't if you don't have an event on Facebook or, you know, or a protest on Facebook, uh, you're, you're missing out on like a potentially huge pool of people. But the problem is, and this is what hackers and, and, and uh, media actors always tell us, this shit does not belong to us. And so the fact that we invest in building our profiles on these platforms that don't belong to us, makes us hugely vulnerable because one, some media could get kicked out mm -hmm. of Facebook at any moment, you know, and we, and really we have no, no real legal recourse to sort of fight it, you know? Right. Um, and, uh, and two, uh, these companies are profiting off of us. And, uh, and so, you know, we, we, while we don't like it, we have been parallel, parallelly, trying to build both our platform, our independent platform, in case any other shit happens, or 
and building our social media world. I'd rather that we spend 100% of our time on our independent media platform, but the reality is different. But who knows? I mean, like now that Facebook has basically pulled the rug out of everybody, now it's just like we have to, you know, reflect and, uh, and, and, and start to boost our own independent media structures.